Hey, 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 everyone. I'm James. I'm here. This is Film School Dropouts. I'm here with a chamber full of Hugh Jackman corpses. How you doing, bud? Floating in water. Oh, yeah. Spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I'm here with Brent. This is Film School Dropouts, season one, episode, I don't know, five or something like that. And um, we are on the movie before the movie that changes everything for Nolan. Yeah. We're talking the prestige today. I guess before we get into it, I want to I want to have a name for this segment. So we're going to call this this segment that we've been doing. We're going to call it Little Movies. Any little movies you want to talk about? Little movies. Okay, yeah, little, little movies. movies. <laughs> yeah, well, like last week I I touched on a feel good movie that made me smile. I'm going to piggyback off that again because I'm kind of be I'm kind of in that mode where I just want to be enjoying a, a nice, fun movie. Okay. A comedy, Hall Pass. Wait a minute. Is that with like... Wow. Oh, wow. 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 <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Flippers and all. Wow. 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 Okay, yeah. <laughs> Hall Pass. <laughs> I've never seen Hall Pass. It's amazing. Sometimes it's un- you really, uh, you really kind of come out of left field. And- it's unsung. It's it's probably the last comedy that I went to a the movies the, <laughs> to an actual theater and laughed throughout the entire thing. Is that the Fairly Brothers? Oh God! Yes, we're gonna have to do this one day. We're, hey, it's a it's a great ride. I'm if, fascinated. If you, if you want to laugh, watch it. Hall Pass. Jason Jason Sudeikis has is a bit of a breakout. He, I was gonna say I heard he was right really before, good in that, right? Yeah, well, it's right before his. Um, yeah, I think he isn't he the horrible bosses or yeah, I'm something like that. Yeah, well, regardless, th- those were okay, but Hall Pass was the one that was really meant, like brought him to light for me. He was hilarious okay. in it. I, and I've Owen never, Wilson is absolutely hilarious. I've absolutely never heard anyone say anything about Paul Hall Pass before. So there you go. I own it. I own there it. There you go. That's your Wrong. movie now. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Okay. Well, the little movie I'm bringing to the table this week is a little film called Star Trek II: The Wrath of Khan, which okay. I watched, which I watched uh, a little bit earlier in the week. Not my first time seeing it. I want to start off by saying I'm not a Star Trek. I'm not a Trekkie. Uh, I've seen a handful of episodes from the original series. I liked them. I absolutely adore the 2009 movie. I think that movie's great. But aside from that, uh, you know, kind of a Star Trek neophyte. But I have seen uh, Wrath of Khan before, and I watched it again. Um, It is a perfect movie. It is such a, like, incredibly engaging movie that doesn't ask anything of the viewer. Like, you don't have to have seen Star Trek, the motion picture. You really don't have to have seen anything before it. You Like, the movie just fully does all the work for you, introduces all the character dynamics, introduces everything you need to know, and then just gives you this badass, like, naval combat space movie in which people are spouting, like, poetic lines of revenge at each other over, like, telecoms and shit. It's fucking gorgeous. It kicks so much ass. I have such a good time watching it every time I watch it. Uh, if you've never seen a Star Trek episode or movie, like just go watch this one movie, Star Trek II: The Wrath of Khan. You don't need to know anything going into it. It's great. That's my uh, that's my low movie this week. That's your low movie. Yep, yep. I don't think we'll ever uh, ever cover the films of Nicholas Mayer, so I think it's <laughs> safe for me to kind of give it the spotlight here. Star Trek is one of those interesting franchises where all the odd number ones are considered dumpster fires and all the even number ones are cons- are kind of put on a pedestal a little bit yeah as far as i know i've only seen like i've seen the new trilogy the the jj abrams one yeah all, i've seen all three of those um and yeah, i saw those seen, as well i saw the original motion picture and then wrath Ra- of khan and uh star trek one like the motion picture is it's a tough sit man it's like it's over- like Two hour, two and a, two hours and thirty five minutes long. It's like well over two hours long. It feels like it's three. It's not terrible. Like it's kind of like I can imagine that movie being really fun to watch if you were just like baked out of your fucking mind because it's <laughs> it's mostly just like crazy colors in space and like people staring at monitors like oh no like there's no villain. It's just like people slowly moving through space. It's kind of good, oh. but like <laughs> it's not it's not like something you should watch uh, for fun. Like that, that would be like a homework, you know, got to sit down and watch this movie. And yeah, but yeah, yeah Rathacon fucking owns bones, man. Great movie. All right. 
that's a god yep yep that ricardo, ricardo montaban yeah he is fucking unreal in this movie yeah, he gives he really gives good. so many lines that are just like did shakespeare write that like what it like who's saying things like this <laughs> in space it rules oh god anyways so but today we're going to talk about an equally good movie the prestige why don't we kick things off show me come on no i can't do it <laughs> How'd you like that? <laughs> well, how'd you do it? Magic. I'll perform this feat in a manner never before seen by yourselves or any other audience anywhere in the world. The audience loved it. This trick is top notch. You need to celebrate. <laughs> A real magician tries to invent something new. God. <laughs> it's something that other magicians will scratch their heads over. I suppose you have such a trick. I sure I do. It's the one they're going to remember me for. What happened? It was the greatest magic trick I've ever seen. The Prestige. <laughs> Love it. Um, first, let's talk about your history with the movie. Cool. Uh, my history with the Prestige, I, I honestly can't tell you if I saw it in theaters or not. I don't really remember. I, I, you know what I did see in theaters though, which I believe was the same year, The Illusionist. It was. I actually have that in my notes because I feel like this movie cannot be talked about without someone also bringing up The Illusionist. <laughs> I mean, it's really weird. They both came out in the same year. I don't. Here's the difference between these two movies. Is there like a magic push that year? Uh, I, or so? Yeah, I don't know. People were going absolutely ape shit for Chris Angel or something. I don't know. <laughs> And also Harry Potter. No, I just can't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, similar. Yeah, um, there probably was a Harry Potter that year, right? I don't know. I'm sure uh, there was. Yeah. Um, no. So I I don't remember if I saw this in theaters or not, but I saw it at the at the very least, like as soon as it came out on DVD or whatever, you know, rented it or something. And like, I really really liked it. I, all of my friends, like, I think I remember all of us like getting together at my buddy's house and we all watched it. And uh, like, it was just kind of like a hype experience, like you know, like we just. It was like when I went and saw the Avengers for the first time and everyone was just like jittery. Well, well. It had, no, it, it really did have like that that energy in the room when we were watching it. Like we were all like, oh my God, where's this going? It's so good. <laughs> like it's such a well put together movie. And uh, yeah, I've seen it a couple times over the years and I just, every time I watch it, I forget that it's so good. And like 20 or 30 minutes in, I'm like, oh, right. Like this is so good. It's, it's that good. Yeah. Yeah. It like sneaks up on you every time, you know? How about you? You uh, you see this one in theaters? I I do believe so. Yes, I think I did because I I it might have been because you know Nolan is always releasing them during like right in the middle of summer for the yeah most he's part. yeah he's got that what is that the, like is it like Jul end, of, end of July? Yeah, July twenty seventh yeah. happens to be my birthday. So that's right. Yeah, he always releases movies he, right he, around your birthday. Yeah, he usually gifts me one. I don't know. I think this might have been one, but. I'm not 100 percent sure I have to check. Oh, this one, uh, I think this one was an October release. Yeah, that's how I, that's how I was thinking. It wasn't until later. All the big actiony, you know. I feel like action is his summer, you know. Yeah, the, the yeah, oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He kind of owns that that weekend there. But I de I definitely remember going to see it and leaving the theater just like, you know, just one of those. You know, it, yeah, it is like a mind blown movie. Yeah, which now we've we've we we come to expect these from him. You know, he yeah, he it. I feel like it could have been a fairly straightforward movie. Well, you want to do the plot first? Let's get in the plot. We could, yeah, we could try. I mean, this movie has it all. It's got nonlinear storytelling. It's got Sir Michael Caine. It's got dead wives left and right. Like it's it's all the Nolan things you love, all <laughs> crammed into one movie. Um. But like I said first, and at one point, uh, Bale's character uh, follows Jackman's character. Oh, oh, you got, oh, a little follow, oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, actually, that was a triple follow because you got Bale's character following Jackman's character, who's charactering <laughs> Bale. <Bale's. laughs> <laughs> oh man, he loves the follow. There, ain't, wait, let me. Yeah, there was a character named Cobb also. Interesting. Is this another Cobb no. movie? <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> I need that Cobb trilogy. Uh, yeah, so the, the L plot of this key, one... Nolan Cobb trilogy? Yeah, bring it on. I don't care. <laughs> Whatever. Um, yeah, the plot of this one's going to be a little bit tougher to run through because of the way he structured the movie. It, it does a lot of the jumping back and forth that he loves to do. 
Yeah. The, I think the brilliant thing about this movie where, you know, he does this nonlinear storytelling in Memento, which is sort of part of the movie with his memory loss. He does it in following, which isn't part of the movie. It's just sort of like he decided to do this back and forth thing, which was cool. It was, it's like his calling card. Yeah. Um, Re- this, reordering the scenes. Yeah. Yeah. To yeah. like kind of put them in different, in a different perspective when you watch them, this movie is, it has like a three act structure. It's so fucking, this movie's so fucking smart. <laughs> God damn it. The movie opens with Michael Caine explaining the rules of a magic trick, which are the pledge, the turn, and the prestige. Yeah. And that's how the movie is structured. It's structured as a magic trick, and you don't realize it a, until the end of the movie that like you, you just watched a full on magic trick of a film. It's so like. Anyway, so the movie starts chronologically. Do you want to try and do that? Sure. I mean, it, it starts with a, a supposed murder happening. Right. You Opening start- scenes, you're you're already thrust into this this heavy drama. Somebody's on trial for murder. Right. The first thing you see is Old like school court scene. Hugh Jackman fall through a trap door on stage. He falls into a big water tank, and there's Christian Bale. Who's like, whoa, what's he doing in there? And then he gets arrested for the murder. And then you jump back in time. The way the movie's structured is each of them has uh, the other's journal that they're reading. So like Bale is like narrating his portion of the story from jail because he's reading Hugh Jackman's journal. And Jackman is spending most of the time narrating his portion of the movie because he's gotten his hands on Bale's journal. So that's sort of how, right? That's like how it's structured. Yeah, yeah no, no. I mean, you, you, the the journals come into play about halfway through, mm-hmm. but you're still seeing it's it's such a crazy way for him to shoot those scenes with mm-hmm. one actor talking about the it's yeah it's oh, it's God. incredible it's so I just whew, boy this movie gets me going so I watched this with uh, with my girlfriend Jessica who had never heard of or seen it um, before yesterday like she was like I don't know what that movie is I was like well let's watch it and. Uh, I mean, what is it? The movie came out in 2006. So, I mean, we're like 15 years on from that. And it worked like a fucking charm. The whole time, her and I were just like, I mean, I knew all the twisted turns and she didn't, but she she was like, what's going on? Like, she was so engaged with it because the movie just like, it just fucking sinks its hooks into you right away. And it's like, come on, we're going, we're going, we're going. Um, and it doesn't matter how well you think you figured it out. You haven't. You haven't. Yeah, because she you she got close. It. She got close a couple times. She's like, "Wait, what's going on with this guy?" And I'm like, mm, "I'm not going to tell you, but you know." And then at the end, she was like, "Fuck," you know. But we'll get there. Um, so, the movie, I guess the story, not the movie, but the story starts with these two young magicians in London. I believe they're called Shills. Okay. An understudies for this older magician, just kind of right. learning their robes going getting just getting taught up you right know? and they're you know they they do things like they'll go sit in the audience and when the magician needs volunteers he'll pick them purposely purposefully so that they could come up and help with the magic trick you know yeah, they're, yeah. They're, they're they're the plants they're the they're the behind the, the stage i think they're part stage hands you know they're just yeah. they're learning the ropes yep yep yeah they're they're yeah they're stage hands, and then like um so it's the two of them and Hugh Jackman's wife who are working for this one magician as well as Michael Caine's cutter the mechanic yeah he's essentially like the inventor of all of these gadgetry illusions and stuff yeah there's a lot of yeah there's a lot of players involved you've got like the magician who's the showman you've got the ingenue who or the engineer or whatever who's the guy who invents things you've got the stage hands who help you know sell the trick whatever and uh, we're introduced to all of this like pretty much in like the second or third scene uh which we see this trick, which is he calls these two men up to tie the, the, what is the, the performer girl? I don't the assistant. Piper Parablo or whatever her name is. Haven't yeah. seen her since Coyote Ugly. Uh, Probably won't. Um, yeah, well. <laughs> um, no, but the, the trick in the she's first the part of this magician movie magician assistant. Or... Yeah, she's the assistant. But this trick in the first part of the movie is she gets tied up by two men from the crowd who are plants and, you know, they're tying specific knots so she can get out. And they put her in water and she escapes. It's cool. We learn pretty soon after that, one of the, I think the brilliant, like almost like you couldn't have pulled this off any per- more perfect way. We we learned the dynamic between Hugh Jackman's character and Christian Bale's character, which is Jackman is a performer. He wants to 
amaze people. He wants to put on the best show possible. Whereas Christian Bale's character is a like technician. He's not showy. He's not good at selling it, but he can do the better tricks. He can do like the more intense, uh, impressive things, but he, he's just not as good as a showman. Yeah. I mean, that's his, the, their biggest, they're kind of like polar opposites in a way where Jackman is the one that gets the audience excited, mm-hmm. but Bale's the one that keeps them there. And this is part one of why I think this movie is such a masterpiece. This is some of the best like meta casting you could think of. Hugh Jackman, the actor, he is everyone's favorite nice big buff guy. He literally is in the movie called The Greatest Showman. He wants everyone to love him. He's so charismatic and handsome. Of course he's going to play this character. Whereas Christian Bale is the dude who every other movie is going to lose or gain 50 pounds. And he's really intense on set. And he's really in character. And he's not concerned with how people view him. You know, like... Yeah, I didn't even think about that. That's actually spot on. How Bale is kind of like this... You know, the talent is through the roof. Not to say that Jackman's talent isn't there. No, it's not. But it's... Well, (laughs) take it easy. Take it easy. I think Jackman is great here. Oh, this is his best performance, I think. I think this is the best he's ever been. He's so good. He's so good in this movie. I think he's an okay, like, charismatic movie star. But he's not going out giving, like, interesting performances on the whole. He was just in a movie this year called Bad Education. I thought that he was really good in it's on hbo yeah yeah it's from the guy who directed uh thoroughbreds from a couple years back but um yeah i'm not like a crazy big hugh jackman fan i just think he's kind of like the big handsome guy that we put in franchise movies and we like him whereas christian bale is you know he can do that but he can do so much more yeah i mean i i I think the verdict still i don't think we've seen jackman's best yet i think the best is still to come well, it's been about uh, 30 years, so the clock's ticking there, Jack. <laughs> well, my, hey, remember the date and the year. Uh, within five years, he's going to do something that's going to blow your mind. I hope so. I, I would love to see that. I mean, if, but, he could, if he can do more of what he just did in Bad Education, like, uh, I'll, I'll believe that a little bit more. So you would say you would agree that he's trending up? N- no. No, no, one, 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 it does not make a trend. I'd say if his next performance is that good, well, then we're trending up. Okay. Can I just talk about, so we, we've come to the discovery why Christopher Nolan has Michael Caine in his movies. Okay. Because he's capable of delivering just a, a throwaway line with so much firepower. He's that machine so... was created by a wizard. Oh, he's so good in this movie. So good. How does he nail certain lines? It's just like that one line is why he's in like. This is why Nolan uses him is because Nolan movies like inherently need someone to come in and just vomit exposition for a couple minutes just to make sure everyone is on like a fair, you know, playing ground or whatever. Like literally the first half of Inception is just like Leo and Joseph Gordon-Levitt like at a chalkboard explaining to the audience how the rules of that movie work. Uh, But Michael Caine is so like magnetic and uh, like fatherly. You like, you like put your trust in him once you see him. Yeah. He's like the heart, you know? So when he's explaining how these things work and how the rules of the movie work, you're just like, Oh, I get, I get why he's in every fucking movie of his after Batman begins. Cause even, you know, Bale and Jackman's characters, they both have, kind of douchey dark oh, yeah. you know they both do just disgusting things this is a movie about obsession and yes they, like that's, being obsessed with your heart. i got yeah. that in my note this yeah is total, it's all about obsession both of them both of them yeah. were completely obsessed driven the, the whole length of the whole length of the picture exactly so if you yeah, if you did i don't think if you had michael Cade in this movie like it'd be tough to i mean i think christian bale for? You could root for Christian Bale. He's got a little bit more of a sympathetic arc, but... Lying to his family and to the point where she killed herself. Spoiler. I mean, it's not great. Yeah, okay, like massive spoilers for this movie because this is like one of the most twist-heavy movies out there, so... Yeah, but you he, know what we should probably include at the front of each video is a spoiler alert. Probably, but, you know, whatever. Like I said, uh, this movie's 15 years old. Get over it, people. <laughs> if you haven't seen it by now, what's going on here? So, yeah, so these two guys... uh are doing this trick with the woman in the water tank and one of the shows 
uh, the woman drowns. She can't get out in time. They can't break her out in time and she dies. And it's Hugh Jackman's wife, which kicks off the coolest plot any movie could possibly have, which is two battling magicians go into war with each other for the entirety of like a two hour, 10 minute movie. I was going to say undying rivalry, but I like yours more. Yeah, no, battling magicians. Every movie should have battling magicians. This is great. This is so cool. And like, I, I started like cracking up, like with joy at one of the scenes uh, early on when they're arguing about the knot. Because it's just like, these guys are such fucking nerds for magic that they're just like so amped about like how to do the specific magic trick. And I'm like, fuck yes, these guys are so passionate about their dumb art. I'm so here for this like war that they're about to go with on each other. Yeah, that scene, you know, ends with... You know, the whole, that whole scene, Michael Caine is drilling over. He's like trying to get, teach Bale's character, you know, what, what. And at the very end, he's like, and if, you know, then he finally turns his attention to Jackman and his wife. And if I can see it, the, the bloke sitting in the, and he kind of yeah, yells at him. Yeah, yeah. Like, if I can see, first uh, I wish I could do a good Michael Caine. Yeah. Like, if I can see you kissing your wife's leg every night. <laughs> so can the bloody blokes in the first row. <laughs> yeah it's good it's good so at this point what is it jackman's wife is dead and the movies yeah the movie starts to like the and this is when the movie starts like peppering in hints and clues like pretty much right from here so you've got jackson's wife dying and then the next scene is her funeral where christian bale shows up and he says what knot did you tie and bale says i don't know which is true because he probably wasn't the one that was there that, that night you know what i mean like that night was probably the, the other bail was there. And that's why he's saying, like, I don't know, because he genuinely doesn't know. Oh, see, I didn't even think Valen was there during that time. I thought Valen came. Well, he's been a twin his whole life. So, like, who knows how fucking long they've been switching in and out of doing this magic trick thing. And I, th I think that that's part of it is, like, he genuinely doesn't know which not his brother tied. So that, and he's the one at the, the funeral that day. So, like, he feels so terrible about it. And they start peppering in little tiny clues like that throughout. Okay, so hold on. Twin? What? No, I, I thought it was different. What do you mean? They're twins. No, I thought he just used the machine one time. No, no. He says later in the movie, Tesla never made me a machine. And he just says he's a twin? Yes, that's the twist of the movies. He's a twin brother. I thought the twist was he only used it once. No, no. He never, he never used it because he... He gives, um, uh, he gives, what's his name? He gives Jackman the code to deciphering his journal. Yeah. Which is the word Tesla. And he says, Tesla is the code to deciphering my journal. It's also the key to my trick. And then later in the movie, he's like, I never made, or Tesla says, I never made a machine for that man. And Hugh Jackman is like tricked into thinking that it was basically a red herring that Hugh Jackman go to Tesla at all. So I think as he's, spoiler again, as he's laying there dying, <laughs> Yeah, he says you, you, he says twin brother. Like, yeah, and Bale says I think he says no. No, he what? doesn't. No, he doesn't. No, I like uh, the the way that it all works out is Bale gives him that keyword, and Hugh Jackman being as obsessed as he, we're getting way ahead, but that's fine. Hugh yeah. Jackman being so obsessed goes to Tesla and says, "You need to make me a machine like you made this man." And him and Andy Circus were both like, "Okay, we'll make you a machine." And then later, when he actually gets the machine, he finds out from Andy Circus that Tesla never built that machine in the first place. And they were just using him because he was giving them funds, which they didn't have anymore. So Bale sent him to Tesla as like a red herring. He never used that machine before. See, I would, I, I, I don't like that. What do you not like? The rules. <laughs> I <laughs> thought it was this, this, you know, I've owned it for 15 years and I prefer him just able to conquer that inner demon of using it over and over and over like jackman he only used it once and he i don't like a default identical twin from that we don't that's been there that's the whole thing that's they mm. they build oh don't even don't even with me because they build that in like immediately um you've got the scene where bale is performing as like an underhand for like an even lesser um magician and that magician performs the crushing the bird to make it disappear mm -hmm. trick and the little boy and the audience starts crying and the guy brings it back and Bale's uh, magician guy you know hands it to him and the little boy's like where's his brother yeah 
and Bale is sharp eye. Bale immediately is like, "Oh, your 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 son's really smart." Like they're immediately highlighting the whole brother thing right away, and uh, even. Uh, not long after that is the scene where they have to figure out how the Asian magician is able to do the magic bowl or the magic the goldfish bowl. bowl. And but that's at, at, during that scene when he's talking to Jackman on the street and he's like, no, this is the act. This yes. is the trick right here. They, they keeping it up the whole time. Yes. At that point, he comes to the realization. Like I, I thought that's when he, that, no. right after that is when he's like, okay. You no, keep- no. Cause I think, because that, that scene you see Valen for the first time. He he spots that right away. And Jackman is talking to his wife and is like, he spotted it like so quickly because he's been doing it already. That's the thing. He's he's already living that life. And that's why he was able to say, like, you know what, that guy's he's bullshitting like out in public. Like I, I do that too. So that's why he was able to spot it so quickly. See, and you how could you don't even see Valen at before that. So you I don't how need would, to. Uh Oh my God! You're so, you you did I ruin the movie for you? No, no, it's still an amazing movie. Because it's here's a, the a thing: small setback. No, it's not. Here's the thing: is their obsession is so different because Jackman goes so far as to fucking literally clone himself and murder himself over and over again, not knowing you know which one of him you know if he's going to end up dead or if his clone is every night. He goes that way, whereas. Bale goes another way. He's already got this twin brother and they sacrifice their life and they each live half of a life to make their like, you know, to make their performance a reality. So it's these two sacrifices they each make, which are completely different things. Yeah, no, I like I like the sacrifices. I like all that. Oh, you're so bummed about the brother thing. Yeah, it's just now oh, here's to here's me it's the a cop out. It's not a cop out. They, it's not like they didn't build it into the movie. If I was introduced to both of them in the very get go or in the very beginning, but don't. Well, well I that, just but then that it wouldn't be self control to only use no, it. But that's no, the he, nev- he had the self control to never have to use it. That's the thing. Is he already he had sacrificed? Exactly. He already sacrificed his whole life. And you, you, you get if they had introduced him in the beginning of the movie, there would be no twist at the end of the movie. The whole movie, you'd be like, oh well, yeah, he's using his twin brother as a double, like. No, that's that okay or cool. even just valen well I the mean, valen the valen introduction came at a specific time that i feel yeah i don't know it just came he never out. went to tesla though that's the thing is he always had like when he got his finger shot off like yeah. and then the next scene or whatever like a couple scenes after that is his wife cleaning the wound being like oh it's just as bad as it was the day it happened it's like it just happened it's like yeah because he just cut his fucking brother's fingers off like it, it, they they pepper everything in. Like Nolan isn't isn't slouching at all. There's no there's no like laziness here. Like when he reveals that he's a twin brother at the end, all the work was done up into that point. Like go and rewatch the movie again. Every moment, there's so many little lines that. Oh, I know. Just, oh, it's it, I love. Hey, it's, it's like the Sixth Sense where you go watching the Sixth oh, Sense yeah. again, and you're like, holy shit, it's all in there. Well, that's kind of one of one of the um, categories that I always kind of judge movie upon is rewatchability oh this one's got and this is this is right there yeah because you act it is almost like a uh, a new movie the second way through because you you see all of it all over again yeah the more and more you watch it like there's little tiny lines that seem like throwaway lines where you're like oh my god it's just about that's the whole movie right there you know like the fucking line with the with the the boy talking about where's his brother he pulls it out yeah he spotted it right away it's fucking great well, yikes, yeah. right. Well, so knock that down a whole, uh, whole star for you, then, huh? All right. Not a whole, not a whole. <laughs> oh my god, I think you should uh, rewatch like the first like twenty minutes of the movie. I've seen it a gazillion times. I just but, like, rewatch it again now that you know he's not a clone. Well, I just went. I just figured he copied himself once at a certain time, and then from there, it was exactly like the everything else fit exactly the same. But I just but thought. He, uh, if that were the case and like you you know your theory is that like he could overcome it he doesn't because he still goes back to Hugh Jackman's show again to try and figure out what his secret is like he, he still is obsessed afterwards so like that that's the, be- the the beauty of this theme that dueling obsession like oh anytime one did something the other one did another then that one did something then that one did uh, I love the uh, I love the joke about how they keep changing the name of their you know Bale has the transported man Jackman has the new transported man. There's a scene where Jackman holds up a newspaper and Bale's act is now called the original transported man. (laughs) It's really good. 
it's a good little joke wow we just we just un like unloaded so much of this movie in that little debate about who, 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 if he was a brother or not. I don't remember where we were at. So let's pivot and talk about fucking David Bowie playing Nikola Tesla in this movie. So, this is the great Denton. Mr. Ellie has refused about your act to me on any number of occasions. Hold out the other hand. Yeah, I mean, amazing. Unbelievable. How like, good is David Bowie? This fucking guy just shows up literally out of electricity. <laughs> like, he just, is, this, is this his last film, too? No, I don't think so, because he died a little bit after this movie. Well, he, he only died, I mean, he died closer to where we are right now, didn't he? I don't know. I don't, I don't think he had that many roles. Well, he didn't, yeah, he didn't act a ton. Andy Serkis, I didn't, I mean... I, I think I think when this came out, I didn't even know who that was. It was just some guy, and now it's Andy Circus. <laughs> it's really weird because he's kind of good in this as just like some guy from like the Bronx or something. <laughs> he, has such, he has such a like a gruff voice. It's weird, yeah. right? Yeah. Unfortunately, no. This was not his uh, last movie. He made a lot of um, movies that I've never heard of, uh, and then he showed up in uh, uh, Twin Peaks, uh, like reboot. Oh, okay. Yeah. That was basically the end of it. I think this was probably the start of ScarJo's little pop too. Or, well, I, it might have started with the Island, Michael Bay's The Island. But I, at one point, studio. Yeah, well, just, and then you had um, everyone was lost in translation. Like she had, she had a weird start to her, like because she had all these like false starts, like Lost in Translation, where you're like, oh, she's going to be the next big thing, and then like nothing really happened for a while. I think she was going for that. I think she was going for just like I'm going to be in everything. You think so? yeah. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be good enough to be in everything. Studios are gonna want me for everything, but I'm not. I don't think it was to like like under her skin was, or no. It was uh, Iron Man two. Iron Man two, like when she shows up as Black Widow. Yeah, that was the beginning of her being like one of the biggest movie stars on the planet. Because then she okay. does Avengers and she's huge in that, and then it, then she's in fucking whatever she wants to be in. And yes, she does fucking under the skin, which is like the gnarliest most badass movie ever made i fucking love that movie so much you still haven't seen it right well i saw the parts that i wanted to see oh you're such a freak god <laughs> you need to watch that movie it is so fucking good it is like no, it's a lot of a uh, lot of music tones yeah and yeah visuals and it's not really for i i'm a dialogue guy no you, you like the witch that's true. Well, atmosphere. Come on. That's literally all under the skin is, man. Oh, we're not going to get into this debate right now. I think you'd really like it if you watched it without uh, interaction. Um, so the next part of the... No, I won't watch it. <laughs> God. Um, so, yeah, so Bowie shows up for a couple scenes in this. He's playing Nikola Tesla, who creates a magical teleportation device for Hugh Jackman, and then he's out of the movie. It's great. Uh, apparently, Bowie was the only person... Nolan had in mind and he offered it to him and said, listen, you're the only person I want to play this role. And they had to go back to him a couple of times and he eventually took it, which like good for Nolan. That's a, that's a really smart casting choice. Yeah. I mean, he killed it. it He's so good in this. It's, it's David Bowie. He just, the thing. Yeah. I always forget that David Bowie is like, a. Well, he was just such a good actor. He's, I think he's just one of those guys that could do it all, you know? Yeah, and he wasn't like there are plenty of uh, like pop stars and singers who become good actors. Uh, like I think Jamie Fox. Yeah, Jamie Fox is really good. I think Justin Timberlake's really good in The Social Network. You know, like uh, uh, the difference with David Bowie is he'll just show up in a movie with no ego, like and do like three scenes and have the most gravitas in the world, and then just be out of the movie. Like, he has no... He doesn't show up to a movie with, like, pop star energy. He shows up to a movie with, like, character actor energy, which is really, really cool, I think. Yeah, I mean, he's a rock star, man. He's so he just, great. Yeah. yeah. I remember um, the first time I watched uh, Scorsese's Last Temptation of Christ, uh, he's in that movie. He plays Pontius Pilate. The first time I watched that movie, I didn't know he was in it. And when Pontius Pilate came on screen and had his scene, I was like... Who's this fucking guy? He's got so much like good, like magnetic energy. Like, who's this actor? I looked it up. I'm like, oh, it's <laughs> iconic singer David Bowie. <laughs> yeah. hey, of course. Yeah. 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 He's the best. So yeah, he shows up for a couple scenes of this. He's he gives Jackman a warning not to become too obsessed, and then he's gone, right? He has a couple of really good lines. Yeah. It's like, do me a favor, bury it 
or destroy it. Yeah. Put it in the bottom of the ocean. Which at that point, like, how do you not, like, how did Jackman not go? Oh, yes, sir. Of course. (laughs) The old goblin king himself. Oh, man, he's the best. What a fucking, he was just a towering, you know, icon. Loved him. Yeah, I mean, Labyrinth, you know, Labyrinth is, that's a classic, you know. I grew up with that, so that's always going to be a special place. And do you ever see The Hunger? Uh, Tony Scott, seen... Tony Scott's first movie, The Hunger. Nope. It's a vampire movie that he's in. It's really hot. It's like a fucking sexy erotic vampire movie. He's it's awesome. <laughs> we'll, we'll cover Tony Scott someday. You'll love yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. So, so these guys basically go to war with each other. Um, at one point, Jackman shoots off Bale's finger at a performance. Bale comes back and like snaps one of Jackman's cages, which breaks a woman's finger at one of his performances. And he pulls the fucking water tank out from under him and he breaks his leg. Like there's so much like, um, it's almost like an espionage. It, it, you, you know, the cartoon spy versus spy. This is like the Nolan version of spy versus spy. Magician versus magician. Yeah. Donald Don, uh, Daffy Duck versus Bugs Bunny. Robert Angier versus Alfred Bolden. Uh, Dawn of Justice. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, you like that one, huh? That was a good one. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Uh, oh, man, so what else do we need to talk about? I want to talk about like some cool scenes because I feel like the the main thrust of this movie is these guys fucking go back and forth trying to one up each other until uh, the end of the movie, which. I think we should end on that note. So we'll get to there. Yeah. I mean, I just think throughout the whole movie, you see not only them one upping each other as, as terms of magic, but also kind of like villainy, villain, villainous actions. You know, there's it without Michael Caine's character. There's not a lot of, not a lot of people to root for. I want to, I want to, I want to make my case for Christian Bale's character. (laughs) Okay. It is kind of implied that Rebecca Hall died or no, not Rebecca Hall. No, she kills herself. Um, whoever plays uh, Jackman's wife, she dies because of a mistake that Bale made. Which I know you're getting at. She gave the go-ahead. Well, no, no, no. That's not what I'm getting at all. Like, okay. like he, he fucked up. Like, one of the two Bales fucked up. And someone died because of it. And that's terrible. You know, I understand Jackman's rage at that. The problem, I think, with what Jackman does is he goes so far as to frame him for murder and take his essentially kills that girl's father and takes her into his custody like he goes like to like super villain levels whereas bale like made a mistake and maybe had some anger about like everything that was going on but he never like murdered bale on purpose or you know took bales or he never took jack jackman's child away from him and like left him for dead in jail or anything like i think that jackman goes to a level that is like and which is why the end of the movie you see michael kane helps bale get his revenge right because I, I think at the end there i i really think that christian bale is kind of the sympathetic character in the movie they're uh, both they're both obsessive like monsters just well just how bale has is you know he says multiple times oh you gotta you're, you can't be afraid to get your hands dirty I just feel like Bale has no problem killing birds at will, you know, just there's a lot of darkness I got from Bale. Yeah. How he treats his wife, how, the fact that he marries a woman and doesn't know. tell her. And they like trade off with her. Yeah, and shit. yeah that's, that's, that's pretty sinister. That's his, that's his, I don't know. That's pretty, to the point where she dies because yeah, she kills of herself. the torment. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It's kind of dark. I still feel like Jackman's more evil. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. I feel like Jackman is like, yeah, I'm going to create a cloning death machine. I'm going to frame you for murder. You're going to hang. You're going to leave your child orphanless. I'm <laughs> going to take your orphan into my custody. Like, he kind of goes to like, yeah, I think Jackman's mistake is that he's evil. Whereas Bale's mistake is that he is too devoted to his craft. He yeah. shouldn't, he should have never had a wife and kid. No, and, and that just came out of what happenstance because I guess they, they happen to be at the show and. Yeah, but one of them actually fell in love with her. Is the thing eventually? I mean, not I don't not in love enough to to tell her that he's a twin, and you know that yeah. not not in love not in love enough to like stop his brother from like living half of his life with her. All right, you you, you got me a little bit there, but did he love her enough to want her to live? I think one of them might have. <laughs> he was fifty percent of the way there. <laughs> 
yeah. Uh, uh, it's yeah, it's a morally um, uh, dubious movie. Aside from, like you said, Michael Caine, who has all of the right, he makes all the right decisions at the right times. I feel like. Well, he gets the smile. Like yeah, I feel. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I know he's so charming. So, um, I feel like this could have been a, a much more fairly straightforward movie, but because it's Nolan, like you, you know, like we talked about, all the scenes are out of order. Yeah. So he takes he he takes already pretty much a good story. And then he nullifies it by switching and this here, this here, this here. And he's, that's, I feel like what takes this movie to the next level. Cause it already was a good story. Yeah. I think if you were to like watch this linearly, it would be good. But I think um, part of the reason that you don't realize Fallon is a twin brother is because of the way it's cut together. You're kind of like, Oh yeah, here, that's his, that's his helper or whatever. But I think if you saw him in every scene with him for a long stint, you'd be like, wait, there's something going on with that guy. Right. Uh, whereas, you know, the way it's cut together in the final version of it is a lot more ambiguous and harder to pin that character down. Because he's sort of the key to the entire twist of the movie. You know, once once you see him at the end, it's like, ah, okay. When he boldly I mean, throws two twists. the ball and the other one catches it. Yeah. I, yeah. I actually think there's another one. Just, you know, seeing those, another spoiler, those corpses at the very end. The fact well, that he's able to go through with it. That's the second twist for me is like... <laughs> So Jackman's thing, Bale's thing is that he's a twin brother and he does this incredible body swap thing that nobody knows about because no one knows he has a twin brother. He's sort of like has this fake identity um, that no one knows about and he's able to incorporate that into his real life, yada, yada, yada. It's a lot more tactile um, and a lot more like manual. Whereas Jackman's big trick is he hires Nikola Tesla to invent an actual teleportation cloning device. Um the trade-off being he doesn't ever know which person he's going to be when he activates that thing. So it clones him, the trap door goes, somebody falls into a water tank to drown below, and the other person gets teleported to the balcony who gets to do the cool, oh, look at me, I'm a great magician speech. And the ultimate twist of the movie is the very final shot where you find out that there are just like hundreds of dead Hugh Jackmans in tanks, which is the darkest thing I've ever fucking seen. He was... Yeah, I mean, it's very final line. It was all for the look on their faces. Oh, man. And do you know what one of the best shots of this fucking movie is? Is the first time he does the trick with Root, who is the, the body double he finds, where he falls below and then Root goes up, catches it. The applause oh. is going and it cuts to him under the stage bowing. in darkness, bowing. Yeah. What a fucking, that's such a knockout scene. That's some like, I mean, that says so fucking much about his character, you know? That he's yeah, just, that, even, that was even when he can't be seen, he's like thriving off of people's ad, you know, admiration. But then that that same, you know, that same passion, that same thing, that same force that's driving him to want to bow is the exact same force that pushes him to to get rid of root. And say, because yeah, because it's not good enough for him to have a double. It's, he it's wants to be the one bowing, even obsessed. if that means even if that means he has to clone himself and kill one of himself every night. As Obsessed. long as he gets the admiration. And Michael Caine's line, obsession is a young man's game. Yep. Because he doesn't age. He keeps dying. Yeah. And well, what do you think? Do you think that's the clone or do you think it's, it, is he? Switching? I don't think you're supposed to know. I don't think you ever know. I think. Well, what do you think? <sighs> My, when I first saw it, well, you do, you, you, you say. I, your logic is telling me the, that the Hugh Jackman from the beginning of the movie is dead. Because every time he comes out, he says, I don't know if I'm going to be the one in the tank or in the balcony. And I feel like he would all he would know that if he was actually the same person as he was from the beginning of the movie. Right. So I think he's I think that first scene where he pulls the gun out and shoots where he says, no, 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 I'm not. And then he gets shot. I think that's the first I think that's the original Jackman. and He's dead now. OK, but I think that the clone, I don't know, they don't the, the one of the cool things about this movie is they get they leave it so ambiguous as to like the actual science, like what memories does this clone have? Like, you know, they, they don't really get into that at all. Right. And that actually takes me to my next point, because like we just went through with Batman Begins, Nolan has this tendency to kind of explain mysticism through science and mechanic mechanic just mechanics yeah even in his more fantastical movies like inception 
it's he's he really wants it to be very grounded and Tenet, science you know yeah he's, ten, yep yeah he's tra- he tries so hard to take like mystical or magical things and mm-hmm. explain them to the viewer with science or mechanics yeah sure this this is you know another huge example because how yes. often do you see all the you know uh, michael kane's uh, he he michael kane is literally the gadget man yeah he has like a crazy contraption that you put on your back and you have to crank it up that attaches to these like blade things steampunk like, yeah like it's yeah, yeah. very tactile yes and that's just you, even with interstellar like it's science-based sure. yeah. everything is so science-based and that's I'm just another reason why i appreciate him i was gonna say i think that that's his strength i think there's it will get to interstellar um but there's like one part of interstellar that i think he trips up a little bit because he doesn't fully stick to his little, you know, everything needs to be science-based, but we'll get to that. And I will be gushing over that movie so much. I love it. Yeah. So yeah, don't worry. This isn't uh, uh, me teeing off uh, a bad interstellar episode. This is a little sidebar, but about interstellar and actually about that YouTube uh, cinema sins. Oh, um, fuckers. It's the only movie that I saw that actually had Neil deGrasse Tyson do these and like <sighs> our, Aurora award that movie points because it was so scientifically accurate. That's cool. Uh, the other oh, guy's he's annoying. I like him, but like, oh. I like him a lot. But like, dude, can you just watch a movie? Like, every time he sees a movie, he has to go on Twitter and be like, Well, the gravitational pull in marriage story wouldn't allow for those characters. Like, marriage story, you're going after marriage story. What are you doing, man? Fucking nerd. That's my like, favorite. Oh. My favorite story is he had James Cameron. Yeah, he fucking he, yeah, he pissed off yeah. James Cameron about Titanic. Yeah, made him change the stars in the sky. Actually, on this date in uh, the Northern Atlantic Ocean. Well, uh, actually, the... because I've never been late, I spent the last week finding out the okay. star constellations. Like, what a fucking dork, right. Neil. Neil deGrasse Tyson, come on this podcast and defend yourself. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, uh, yeah, I, I agree with you 100%. I think that one of his strengths is, like, even in his most fantastical moments, he's trying to keep it as, like, uh, tactile and like real as possible Practical. I think it's, it's it's cool yeah it's really cool yep. all right so the end of this movie like we've already basically dove into a lot uh has all these great reveals in the last couple of minutes uh christian bale gets hung and he says abracadabra it's fucking so rad it's the coolest fucking thing in the world right after that i mean he throws the ball throws to the ball valen and it's you know oh like they haven't done that before yeah you know? Yeah, I think Christian Bale's super good in this. I mean, I I think this is Jackman's best performance. I, this is not, this might be, I don't know. You could make an argument that this is Bale's best performance. Like, he has so many good ones. It's like, I wouldn't know where to start. But like, that's, that's a whole nother show. Yeah, exactly. Bale's but like, best performances. I, I think he's really good in this. I love, I love when he gets to use his like actual accent in movies and when he gets to have fun, which he's doing both of in this movie. Like, he's not doing the whole Bruce Wayne, like, brooding, serious, like, He's a pretty serious guy. He's pretty tortured. He's pretty like obsessed. But like, there are fucking scenes where he has a lot of fun. Like when he uh, when he fumbles the ball in jail yeah, and like yeah. puts the handcuffs on yeah. the guard's leg and he starts oh, laughing. Yeah. He starts laughing. He's like putting his arms up to the people in the rafters and they're all cheering him on. Like he he has this really good like you know cocky British humor. Yeah, that was a good I, scene. I, I really think he's 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 having a blast in this movie. Yeah, I mean that's I I feel like that scene might have been. Uh what got people to theaters because you see like like him throwing the cuffs on a on a guard yeah. you know and just all the prisoners having a good time with it we should talk about the illusionist for a minute um have you have you seen the illusionist uh i think i did I, yeah that i think i saw it the same year yeah i think i saw the illusionist illusionist in theaters and i don't remember fucking anything about the illusionist i remember it not being very good right like i feel like in my did I, i'm wondering if this movie came out like before the prestige that year and like took some of the prestige's uh like thunder away from it you know yeah, what i, mean? I want to say it came out in late summer where you said this was october yeah this was um looks like the end of october so i'm looking up right now to see um oh yeah it only it came out a couple months before in like mid-august the end of summer yeah but yeah so that that, that movie came out and everyone's like oh look it's the moody magic user movie of the year and then the prestige comes out a couple months later and is just another one of those but like impeccable well it also probably to some extent might have hurt the the box office draw for the prestige because oh, of certainly. how how bad 
And I think at the, that was Edward Norton. I, I I think he was, at least at the time, he was getting a semi decent push. But oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah Mid two thousands, Norton was doing pretty good. Like, I, I just I don't remember fucking anything about the Illusionist. Is the thing? It's because it was. That's what made this the Prestige so much better. Is that Nolan took the time to explain, almost to make the magic real and understandable. Where the Illusionist was just visuals. He was making stuff grow and okay. It just it was CGI fan, fantastical. Was it okay? I'll, yeah. I'll have to, I, I wouldn't mind checking that. It's got like Paul Giamatti in it, right? Like I, I wouldn't mind checking that out. Like just to see, fascinating. But like, <laughs> that's pretty good. <laughs> um, fascinating. I love Giamatti. Uh, yeah, so that's interesting. I mean, I'm looking at the the box office right now, and even with you know the Illusionist coming in first that year, Prestige outgrossed it. Probably word of mouth. Yeah, that must have been it because like. Uh, Looks like the Illusionist worldwide made 87 million, whereas the Prestige made 109. So, like, not like a huge gap, but it still did better than uh, the Illusionist did. Ugh. Had a much bigger budget than the Illusionist, but I mean, I think after Batman Begins, Nolan's just you know he's starting they to just go keep up and going up. Going up and up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, now we're just looking at the the cast keep getting more prestigious, the budgets keep getting bigger. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I mean, the next movie is what sets the world on fire and, you know, makes him the biggest director alive. So we'll get to that. Um, you want to do a, a quick rating of this movie? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I gave it a 4.5. I think it's almost perfect. I think it is fully perfect. Five stars for me, baby. <laughs> Five stars. You know, I think, um, I, I, like, it's just a movie that makes me pump my fist. Like, I'm just like, I get sweaty and i'm all hyped up and i'm like yeah this is great all the way up into that very final shot where the camera pans over and michael said michael kane says you want to be fooled and then it cuts to black and fucking radiohead kicks in what all right yeah, like, yeah, yeah the, let's the, get it like this oh. is great he doesn't waste any time one of my like favorite parts of any kind of any movie at all is the moment of you know the the, the cut to black and the couple of moments of silence before the credits roll because that you could get a lot done with that little that little breath oh, yeah. and this is a good one where it, you just briefly the camera pans over you really briefly see that jackman in the tank he says you want to be fooled cut fucking right into radiohead right into the credits like it was quick huh now you just pointed because i feel like i'm just thinking of those little instances because oh, those yeah. are those can be powerful and i think in because it isn't it inception he leaves it with the the ladle yeah the time it yeah, I think it's there's a, a nice, pretty long chunk. Yeah, of pause. it's a long shot. Yeah, yeah, but uh, I think it might. It's, oh, you're talking about the pause after? Yeah, yeah. I you think... know, well, we'll, uh, well, I'll keep an eye on that because, like, that. I mean, there are little things that I get obsessed with with movies, like uh, how people are credited in a movie. You know, uh, who who gets the you know in the credit blocks where it says like with this person and this person. Like, I, I like to know like who's who's getting the and in this movie and like. Yeah. The, like little minutia that I love is that little break before the, tr the the credits roll. It could do so much for the movie. One of one of the uh, all time like ones that sticks in my head. I don't know if we'll ever cover this person, but Lars von Trier's Melancholia. Uh, you ever seen Melancholia? <sighs> yeah, yeah, I did. Oh my god, five stars. Um, I love Melancholia so much. But the end of that movie oh. is the world literally explodes, and that movie and that the 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 bridge to the credits is fucking so good because the movie explodes. The world, Earth is just destroyed entirely, obliterated, explodes, cuts to black. There's this like orchestral music playing and then it just says Kirsten Dunst. And I'm like, fuck yes, <laughs> like that rules. No, and then when it said that for me, I was like, oh my God. Great movie. Oh my God. Melancholia, great movie. Um, well, let's not get hung up on that. Let's talk about yeah. Uh, let's talk about the prestige, uh, which I think we're I think we're basically done talking about it. We've, we've covered pretty much everything in here. We've talked about. I, I am curious. Who, is it and Michael Caine for this one? Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure Michael Caine gets the end. He's got to get the end. Got to get the end. You know it. I had my DVD around here. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't have it on me right now, but like, you know what? I got it right here. I'm gonna take you, a look. You got to know. No. Who gets the end? It's not. Who gets the end? David Bowie. David Bowie gets the end. 
Hugh Jackman, Christian yeah. Bale, Michael Caine, Scarlett Johansson, yeah. and David Bowie. Yeah, yeah, and David Bowie. I, I should have thought Michael Caine's too big of a yeah. He would be like third build. Yeah, he wouldn't. If if, any, if anything, I would have went with Andy Circus and David Bowie. That would have been yeah, that would have been the way to do. A bit of a while while's away. Well, actually, two thousand. He was already Gollum at that point. Yeah, yeah. Huh. He's already, I mean, not like Andy Circus has many roles where you can see his. Uh, very interesting face you know he's great as claw though he's so good as claw he's so fucking funny as claw apparently can he come back to life the, uh, the, yeah of course it's a fucking it's marvel, marvel movie. okay yeah i don't know why i asked <laughs> Just, they'll, they'll do it whatever uh yeah he was so good as claw um i don't think we should play the game this week just because the only keyword that this movie has the only genre that it's under is supernatural which is like it's just everything. Gonna, it's, yeah, it's just like the same movies we've guessed the last four weeks. Yeah, right? like we'll just skip. That's right. it. You know, we'll come up. We'll come up with another. I want to come up with like a backup game that we can play. Yeah, was, what, what happened to that trivia book I had? Oh well. Oh God, I've looked at that. That thing is tough. It is tough. There's some stuff in there. I'm like, I don't know. What, I, don't, I can't tell you the fucking world history of Elia Kazan. I don't fucking. Know. <laughs> what do you want? Um, so yeah, we'll skip the game this week, but um, we could do our little uh, our, our other little movie segment, something that you're looking forward to, which I think you kind of teed up uh, before we started recording. Oh yeah, um, did you? Did you? Is that what you were teeing up? Yeah, it's a movie that's coming out um, the 12th, March 12th, 2021. Oh okay. New new director because you know you know I you like to scout the new ones too. Got it. Yeah, you keep your eye out. out. Um, his name is Elliot Kazan. No, oh. Flor. Nope, not even. Florian that's the... Beller. That's what you just said. See, yeah, no, started... I was talking about the director of On the Waterfront starring Marlon Brando. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's got a new one coming out, Back from the Grave. <laughs> He's getting the, the dust off him. Yeah, yeah, the cobwebs. Uh, Florian Zeller. Okay. And this movie is called The Father. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I know, yeah, of course. Yeah, The Father. Been looking out for this one for a while. So it's coming out this week, finally? The 12th. So, yeah, okay. within, you know, five days. Um, I think she, you, you like her. I mean, I love her. Olivia, Olivia Coleman. Coleman? Yeah. Olivia. Okay. okay. Love Olivia. Yeah. She's in there. And then, um, old master class Anthony Hopkins. Yep. Yeah. I guess it's a movie about like an old man who has Alzheimer's. Sounds like from what I'm I've heard. They say, no, exactly. From what I heard, no. it's all, all the reviews I've read are like, yes, this sounds like weepy Oscar bait, like, but it's good. Like everyone's like, but it's actually good. This one, it's not hillbillyology or whatever. You know, it's it's actually oh. got some craft to it. Um, and yeah, I mean, uh, Olivia Coleman. Yeah, give her another Oscar. I would love for every time Glenn Close does a shitty Oscar bait move like hillbillyology and gets close to winning an Oscar for the first time. I would love it if every time Olivia Coleman came in and won because that's what happened last time with uh, her winning you, for the favorite. You're not a Glenn Close fan. I love Glenn Close. But yeah, why is she doing movies like Hillbilly Elegy? It's so clearly that she's just like, I really need an Oscar, so I'm going to make Hillbilly Elegy. You'll put ugly makeup on me. I'll bit, get to be like a horrible old shrew or whatever. Uh, I, I, she's she's so thirsty for that Oscar. You got to step back, Glenn. Her I'm and okay. Amy. I'm okay. Amy Adams? Amy Adams. Yeah, she's in there. Yeah, no, too. she can step back for sure. No, 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 no. So uh, you go ahead and watch Hillbilly Elegy <laughs> and let me know how, uh, how you actually feel about her being in that movie. Why? Did you watch it? absolutely fucking not i didn't what if what if i've seen like a, i've seen oh you what if i like the uh movie based on the book romanticizing trump voters i don't know what do you think you think i'm gonna like that oh uh, yeah way to go ron howard you fucking outed yourself you motherfucker oh man see oh, now God. i want to hate watch it a little bit no 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 you don't need to do that you don't need to do that they're good movies you can watch good movies you could do, here's what you should I do. I like Glenn Close. I do too. And I love Amy Adams. So like, here's what you do. Here's what you do. You go to Google Images. You type in Glenn Close, Hillbilly Elegy. You look at what she looks like in that movie. You click X on the browser. You move on with your life. Everything's great. <laughs> look, if I can watch Daniel Craig and Logan Lucky. Oh, great movie. <laughs> a great movie, a great performance. I just wanted you to say that about Daniel Craig. What, that he's good in that movie? That he's good. I think he's good when he has fun. And I don't think he's had fun and all these fucking Bond movies in so long that it's seeped into other dramatic movies. I think he's great in Knives Out. I think he's great in Logan Lucky. I think he's great in, I don't know, go back to like Munich. I think he's great. But 
it seems like he wants to kill himself every time he has to do something quote unquote cool quote unquote profitable i mean yeah yeah but like he's literally said like i want to slip my wrist with glass whenever i make james bond movies so like yeah maybe. i didn't even watch the last one I have a fun fact about me. I've never seen a James Bond movie. Yeah, 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 you're not a James Bond guy. Yeah, just never seen him. I saw Austin Powers and I was like, what do I need to watch the not funny version of these four? He's cool. It's James Bond. So is Austin Powers. I never said Austin Powers wasn't cool. (laughs) (laughs) My mojo, baby. Yeah. He's so great. I watched the first one the other day. It holds up. It's a great movie. I watched, uh, I actually almost put it on my list because. but I went with Hall Pass instead. Um, Ace from Chirrup. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I watched the first one and the second one. Yeah. The first one is just so, it's the best. I yeah. find myself just laughing, like, still. To the, I, mean, I saw that in theaters. That was a miracle year for Carrie. He had that, the mask, and Dumb and Dumber in one year. Who Like, yeah. get fucked. You're done. You're <laughs> no deep. one else can do that. No. Unbelievable. Um, oh god, how about a little movie for me coming up? I don't even know what's exciting coming up for me. The, you know, if you want to get just to get excited about anything, Oscars are coming. This is very true. Um, I think Oscar voting just started, so uh, was yeah. it they vote for about a week or two weeks or so? Yeah, I think the yeah, nominations will be in like a week and a half. Not that any of this matters because all of this is going to come out well after. All these episodes are going to come oh, out yeah, like yeah. way out. We're going to know yeah. who we're going to know, like that fucking hillbilly allergy won best picture or something. And I'm going to, I'm going to be <laughs> when this is released, <laughs> the father was terrible. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. I don't know. I'll, I don't know. I'll take a mulligan. I'm probably going to watch, uh, I'll put on Lord of the Rings today and I'll just have a great time. Which one? Oh, it doesn't matter. Well, I mean, I guess the Lord of the Rings, no, but if you were going to say like the hot one of the hobbits. I think there's clear difference in quality there. Yeah, I guess you're right. Yes, I am. I know. It just hurts. It hurts for me because you know how much I love. I know. Well, Lord why would you take the shortest book and make three movies out of it? Hey, hey, hey. Save it for the Peter Jackson series. Cause, All right. Because because I'll have I'll have ample defenses for that. Well, it's just we're both in the same boat there. We're frustrated with how it turned out, but that's all right oh i think i'm pretty happy with how it turned out uh well i'm, I'm not that mad about it <laughs> kind of like those movies um even if they yeah, are I just, sort of um fucking bizarre no the lord of the rings are amazing the, the first best. hobbit is amazing i think all three hobbits are pretty great but they oh. have listen they have um weird things going on in each of them i don't know which just, one of the hobbits is my favorite probably the first one but i i think the, the second and third have some cool stuff uh going on in them which we'll talk about in our Peter Jackson mini series. Peter Jackson mini coming <laughs> yeah. soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna stand on a pedestal and wax poetic about King Kong. Anyways, that's all right. Uh, that's great movie. That great movie. Um, all right. Well, I mean, that'll be the end of this episode. Um, I keep Put ending on the prestige. Like, yes, that's right. Uh, this is the prestige. Um, I keep ending every episode by saying we'll see you next week, but we are going to be releasing this entire series at once so that's not really how it's going to go so we'll just see i'll just say we'll see you at the next episode which is going to be our uh the dark knight bonanza right see you at the concession stand yeah we'll see you i mean the next episode is going to be a big one and then after that it's like we're just going to be talking about a director who basically has carte blanche to do whatever the fuck he wants right and i mean the, it's as big as it gets next next yep. episode so yeah all right cool well i'm james i'm brent And I will see you next episode, not week. 